have some star seeds that have very fond memories of, of Atlantis because it was at the height of its, you know, I think of its civilization during the times that they were incarnated there. So they experienced all the best qualities of Atlantis. Then I have other star seeds that, you know, when, when I do their Akashic records, they have very negative um, memories of Atlantis because that was when Atlantis was starting to get corrupted and things were starting to go on the down downward swing. Where was Atlantis located on the planet? People say it was in the Bermuda Triangle. I actually believe that it was actually located closer to Europe. And the reason why I believe this is because I think it was out in the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. but I think that it was probably located fairly close to the, the outline of Africa mm -hmm. and of Europe. Okay, so, and the reason why I think this is because a lot of Atlantean survivors, that the people that survived the wars, ended up in Egypt. Well, how could they have gotten themselves all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to Egypt unless they were already located kind of close? I also read about there is a Pleiadian seed, Atlantis. And I think they were called this golden race of Atlantis or something like that, where mm -hmm. they were like 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, mm. Are there beings like, you know, that we now know as like these giants versions of us living at that time? Yeah, actually, um, most likely those large beings, um, they're what probably similar to what the Bible described as the giants. A lot of our extraterrestrial brothers and sisters are quite a bit bigger than we are, you know, as far as their their physicality. So um, I think Pleiadians um, run from six to nine feet tall. Um, some of the Lyrans were, you know, I think even taller than that. And, uh, you know, so I think the higher dimensional you become, you know, there are exceptions, but the higher dimensional you become, the, the bigger and taller you become. So, so these were likely probably very high dimensional Pleiadian beings that were living along these Atlanteans. And um, I also know they had a, a capital or something on the Isle of Posita or also called mm -hmm. the Old City. Was that like a capital then or was that just a, another city within Atlantis? I think it was just another city. I'm not sure what the capital of Atlantis is. Um, I think it was called Poseidia or something like that. I mean, it was, you know, uh, Atlantis always kind of held Poseidon in quite high regard, you know, because they considered uh, Poseidon to be, um, uh, you know, the, one of the founders, or if not the founder of Atlantis. Poseidon was probably likely an extraterrestrial being that maybe had a part in, you know, creating Atlantis, but was elevated to God status. Okay, so he became, you know, from this extraterrestrial being that maybe had a hand in starting the civilization, he became a god, the god of the sea, you know. So, um, so a lot of our, you know, gods in our, myth you know, earth mythologies were actually most more than likely extraterrestrials that were visiting earth and teaching earth people. So, um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of them did have, you know, uh, they weren't perfect because they were not, you know, gods, really. They were beings, you know, they had imperfections and they had personality, you know, I think disorders or issues. So some of these, you know, personality traits got, you know, locked into these gods. They're, they weren't source, let's put it that way. Atlantis was kind of like, I mean, it was a mix of extraterrestrials, it was a mix of humans. And during that time, you know, people didn't think twice. You know, it was it was just kind of an accepted thing. You know, Atlantis, there's lots of experiments, you know, like genetic engineering and like... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So is that like, at that time, I know, you know, these creatures that were being combined with humans mm -hmm. uh, were, you know, treated more like slaves and... but. There was some beings that treated them more like um, loving pets and stuff like that. So, like, at that time, is that when, like, mermaids and, like, you know, like, these humanoid uh, animal and, you know, water-like creatures existed? Or 
I think, you know, some of the stories, you know, you hear the Greek myths about the Minotaur, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly. you know, a perfect example. I think that was probably carryover from Atlantis. Um, you know, these, these, cre you know, these massive creatures that were, I mean, that, you know, you just can't even imagine today, but, you know, that were, you know, prevalent in some of the, you know, old mythologies, you know, you hear about these, you know, great be, you know, these great creatures, these, you know, monsters. Um, they were um, remnants of experiments that occurred in Atlantis. So I think initially the intention was good, but then like everything else, you know, it got, it got taken too far. Some of these creatures that they were putting together were just kind of abomination. They had gotten so technologically advanced, they started thinking themselves as maybe we can make things better. So I think there was probably an innocent intention at least initially in the beginning. What happens if we build creatures that have qualities of, you know, they have the best qualities of, the, of these other creatures that we're, we're bringing the DNA together to create a new bee? And I think, again, you know, just like in Atlantis, you know, we're seeing that happening here, even here on Earth right now, you know, with some of the, you know, scientific experimentations of cloning and of, you know, maybe, you know, combining genetic modified foods, you know, that sort of thing. So, so we're actually even kind of repeating history again with some of the things that we're trying to do here on this planet right now. Lemuria was more mother God consciousness. Atlantis obviously was father God consciousness, which in its highest forms, you know, these are beautiful, you know, beautiful ways of being. But yeah, Atlantis was a lot more technologically advanced. Their influence was more from Pleiadians and Lyrans and, and Syrians. You know, so they had, you know, more of the influence from Father God Consciousness societies. With, and also, I think towards the end, they, they started becoming infiltrated by the Maldekians and, and by, um, you know, the Orions. Okay, so again, more Father god consciousness societies it seems to be inherent and in when a, when a society becomes very patriarchal and, be, and leans way too far to the to the extreme of divine masculine they start having this desire to take over other other societies positive aspects of divine masculine qualities which is you know more outwardly focused more technologically oriented you know uh you know, leadership abilities to that of more tyranny and oppression. So that's kind of like the extreme side of Father God consciousness, all right? Um, the extreme side of Mother God consciousness would be maybe um, being conniving or passive aggressive, you know, a more codependent kind of, kind of way of being. From what I've seen, I don't know if Lemuria got to that point. Maybe they did, you know, once they were starting to get into wars with the with the Atlanteans. So I think it brought out the worst qualities. So it's more of a destructive quality because you have do have destruction with, you know, mother God consciousness as well. So they, you know, they, they also, you know, retaliated. Can you look into the Isle? I forget the Isle of Posita, I believe, or like the law of one was um, also very in much in the time of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you can access regarding that? The raw consciousness was more of a father god consciousness that was trying to set some laws in place for Atlantis to follow initially. Mm -hmm. And it was meant, it was, you know, meant for altruistic reasons. The law of one was set, I think, mostly as, I think, an attempt to give some sort of guidance to Atlantis, sort of like the Bible does for us today. So it's kind of like a uh, you know, just a book that kind of helps, you know, set some moral parameters for us to follow. So, so I think, you know, the law of one was set for similar reasons for Atlantis. And I think Atlantis followed it for quite some time because Atlantis used to be a beautiful place. I mean, it was, it was a, you know, more technologically oriented place, but it was, you know, it was a high dimensional society as well.